If you've been watching my channel, you know that I just finished a series uh, that was examining the physical evidence of the Exodus account uh, and its historicity. In this video, I'd like to discuss the symbolism of the Exodus account and what it means for us as Christians and the birth of Jesus. If you went through that series, you might have heard me discuss my views on the Bible, and I believe the Bible is allegorical and Christ-centric. Uh, what that means is that the b stories of old are allegories or have a message below the story itself. Um, think of example that Jesus' parables are allegories. Uh, and it's Christ-centric, meaning that the stories of old are pointing to the Messiah coming uh, or Jesus Christ. And I'm, a, I'm not alone in my view. The gospel writers of Matthew and Luke both wanted you to see the symbolism of the Exodus account and the birth of Jesus. So let's discuss that. We'll start off with the gospel of Matthew because Matthew is, he's not shy about trying to get you to see the similarities between Moses and Jesus's birth. Um, the Old Testament, Joseph uh, had a father named Jacob, just as the New Testament, Joseph has a father named Jacob. The Old Testament, Joseph was an interpreter of dreams, while the New Testament, Joseph uh, has all his messages from God to come to him in dreams, such as your wife is not sleeping around on you and you need to get the heck out of Bethlehem. Matthew also shows the similarity be between the Old Testament Pharaoh killing the firstborn sons of the Israelites um, and the New Testament Herod killing the firstborn sons of Bethlehem. The parting of the Red Sea or the passing through of the Red Sea through the, by the Israelites is symbolically baptism. So in the New Testament, after Jesus is, quote, passing through the waters of the Jordan, end quote, uh, or he's baptized, he goes off into the wilderness and wanders in the wilderness where he is tempted by the devil. Just as in the Old Testament, after they pass through the waters of the Red Sea, they wander the desert and they are tempted by the golden calf. After, in the New Testament, after Jesus returns from his temptation in the wilderness, he gives his Sermon on the Mount, which is symbolic for Moses coming down Mount Sinai with the tablets of the Ten Commandments. You see how the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew wants to see a new promised land for the children of God. That's what Jesus is going to provide, just like Moses did in the Old Testament. And the symbolism of the parting of the Red Sea, um, not only is it echoes or li being likened to baptism, think of the actual imagery of the parting of the Red Sea and that of a mother giving birth uh, through her uh, private parts the parting of the Red Sea, giving birth to the children of Israel. When it comes to Luke, the Gospel of Luke, Luke is a little more subtle than Matthew is regarding the Exodus account and the symbolism to Jesus' birth. Luke concentrates more on Mary rather than Joseph by Matthew, uh, which is likened to, the name Mary is likened to Mariam, Moses' sister that watched over him while his mother put him in the Nile River. In the Old Testament, when Moses is born, his mother hides him away for three months. In the New Testament, Mary hides herself and her, her baby in the womb, Jesus, away for three months with her cousin Elizabeth. In the Old Testament, Miriam... Moses' Moses's sister uh, comes from the line of Aaron. Obviously, Moses and Aaron are brothers, just like Aaron and Miriam are brother and sister. So all three of them are brothers and sisters. But they come from the line of Aaron. And when you go to the New Testament and we talk about Zacharias and Elizabeth, cousins of Mary, 
the uh, Elizabeth and Zechariah are from the lineage of Aaron, which Luke tells us. So when in the Old Testament, the Red Sea is covered over by Moses' hand after God said, stretch out your hand and cover the Red Sea to kill all the Egyptians, it is Miriam that gets the daughters of the Israelites to get up and dance, sing, and hit a tambourine on the banks of the Nile River. Well, when Mary in the New Testament comes to Elizabeth, the uh, descendant of Aaron, the baby in her womb, John the Baptist, jumps for or leaps for joy. So that's very similar, but very subtle. When the angel Gabriel greets Zacharias and Mary, uh, first thing he says is, do not be afraid, then provides his enunciation or his announcements. Uh, but that's found, uh, that's what Moses says to the Israelites before they cross the Red Sea. He yells out, do not be afraid, uh, just like the angel Gabriel. And then there are some overtones of the Exodus um, account in uh, Mary's song or Luke's uh, Magnificat that when Mary discusses the outstretching of God's arm, it's very similar uh, to Moses outstretching his arm towards his enemy that to cover his enemy up with the Red Sea or before even opening it up, outstretch his, har his arm. So both Matthew and Luke want you to see the Exodus being symbolic or similar to the Exodus account. Okay, so that's all I have for today, a short video. Thank you if you watch this um, and you care to like or comment, I would appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.